Well, let's talk about this for a minute. It took me a long time to actually get to this point where I can shake, lift my legs up, do all this stuff for VR tracking. VR tracking is an absolute nightmare to try and set up, especially if you have the Quest 3. But it's not so much of a nightmare that it's undoable, that you can't do this. Took me two weeks, two weeks of figuring things out to do this. And you know what? I'm going to show you some stuff here that I did behind the scenes that I had to do. Um, and it's it's not one of those things that was very easy. Uh, I had a lot of help. Uh, I reached out to uh, the community at large. I, I spoke to a lot of people. And, you know, I got to give a big shout out to Dexter Down Under and uh, to uh, Plague and to Kuda. Uh, all three of you guys, absolutely amazing. Uh, helping along the way, just trying to get certain things, certain aspects of this. Now, the first thing you got to know, I have a Quest 3. Um, the the Meta Quest 3, or the Oculus, is what it used to be called. Facebook, of course, bought them out and dove deep into VR. Now, that in itself is one piece of the puzzle. Other people have, uh, like, the, the, the Vive, the trackers, uh, other headsets, but this is particularly my instance with the Quest 3. First thing is trying to figure out the bridge between worlds. I have the HTC Vive Tracker 3.0, four trackers, and I have four of them. So that makes things a lot different in a lot of cases because most people, when they start full body tracking, they start with three. And right off the get go, um, you know, to a marvelous viewer of the channel, they sent me out four trackers. And on top of the headset, like this has all been stuff that has been sent out to me. Now, I did end up having to purchase one thing for myself, and that was two what they're called base stations or lighthouses. They mount on the wall, and they're the things that track in infrared and see where the trackers actually are. And that's where things got very complicated at this point. Put them on the wall. I did all these things and put them on the wall, cleared out a lot of room, a lot of space in the room I'm in right now, which I am going to be moving out of this room. So I have more space for this type of thing. So I'm going to end up going through this all over again. It's absolutely amazing when you sit there and you put on full body tracking and then you can sit there and lift your legs, move around, swish a tail and do so many things more with it. It, it it just gives much more expression behind it and the movement that i've gotten to feels way more fluid first you put on the headset and you're like okay well i put on the headset i have the two controllers that are in front of me they're in my hands right now and that's great that's how you first get introduced to finally going into deep vr especially on vr chat where you start off with the uh with the desktop version and then you move into vr because honestly it's such a different world once you get into vr uh, yeah, i i don't think i'd ever go back i don't think i can if this if this thing breaks i will sell my soul right now to get a new headset that that's it, it's absolutely crazy to even mention that because it's it's addictive it, it, it's not just addictive it's energizing for me i i feel when i put this on all time disappears this is what it used to be like for me when I started playing video games a long time ago. I would dive into a game and I wouldn't stop until it was done. But now this is endless. Now I just get to sit here and make friends and do a lot of other things. So for me, this has been an absolute fantastic thing in my life to do. But when it comes to VR, you can see they're kind of bugging out a little bit because I'm, I'm moving around a little bit. So. When you move around a little bit, things tend to lose a little bit of tracking. That, that's something that's not unheard of. That's where you do have the other things you can do to recalibrate. And that is the biggest thing that I had to do was figure out a proper way to calibrate. Oh, if this wasn't a help from CUDA, if it wasn't for CUDA, I wouldn't, I don't even think I'd be at this point at this point. Um, the, there's a program out there called Space Calibrator. And this program allows you to open the world up and you then see 
the lighthouses. And the problem that I was having right off the get-go, I would see my lighthouses, the two sensors that are being picked up, I would see them in the floor. That kind of drove me insane. I was like, okay, how do I fix this? I moved them around. I did this. I took a painting off the wall. The wolf painting that's on my wall, it's been taken down because it has a reflective surface. So that is the biggest thing in, in the room that you're setting up. Unfortunately, reflective surfaces seem to matter in this, even though they say they've updated the lighthouse to be able to ignore the reflective surfaces, it, but it is going off infrared. And when you have an infrared sensor, these certain things can, can really juggle it up. The first thing that I end up having to do actually was to plug the lighthouses into my computer. It, and this is something, honestly, that isn't part of the traditional steps. You take this little lighthouse, you have to find a cable. It doesn't come with a cable to plug it in. And it's a, it's not a USB-C like the new stuff nowadays. It is the previous version of it. It's the USB, it's a different USB cable. I'll, I'll see if I can find a picture of it. Um, it's a different USB cable and you need to plug it into your computer. Why do you need to plug this into your computer? It's a it's a stationary device that actually doesn't update update anything to your computer. Well, there is a firmware in these stations uh, that tells it to do stuff, and at that point, it gives your computer a sense of what it's looking for in, in the programming. So once I plugged it into the computer, you know, it made the protogen noises went do 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 do, and sure enough there was a little bit of uh, the computer recognizing it as a device. And I think this is a step that a lot of people don't seem to know when it comes to setting up full body tracking and base stations in particular. That little step then suddenly allowed me to see the base stations properly and the base stations to see the trackers. Before that happened, the trackers were, I would have one tracker way over there, I'd have the other one way over there. and. There, there was no alignment. Nothing was setting up, nothing was syncing, nothing was working. And what this did, what was going on was the base stations were power cycling at the same time. But not so much that they were power cycling that they were turning on and off, they were power cycling in, v, in Steam VR, in the program that's supposed to sit there and recognize it. So it, they weren't both working at once. It, one would come up and it would knock the other one off. And because it was doing that, they weren't being able to tri tri triangulate where your trackers were. So this made uh, made things very frustrating at first. Uh, I would put my foot forward, and instead of putting my foot forward, you would see it go backwards or off to the side, and it would be completely jank. And you'd be like, okay, well, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, right? The next thing that I figured out that I had to do, there's the little dongles that come with the trackers. Well, silly me, I stuck them to the wall on the backside. I put them upside down under my table. Well, don't do that. They have to sit flat. They have to sit flat and they need space apart. Um, so obviously each tracker has its own dongle. So now you have to set these up in such a way where you can plug into your computer and honestly get a powered hub. Get a, get a 3.0 hub that will plug into your system and plug into its own power supply because you need that power. These things draw a lot of power on, on their own. I had to reorganize this and it took me a while and, that, and that's where Dexter came in and said, listen, those things need to be flat. If they're not flat, you're going to have issues and I was having issues. I put them all flat. They're in various spots around my computer and they're not being interfered with each other. And now I can see the trackers and they're actually tracking and they, they're not, it's not where one tracker's under the floor and one's in the ceiling anymore. They're actually, I, I see, I see it here. I see my waist here and I see the two on my feet and they're where they're supposed to be in steam VR. This is the other thing too. It will ha it will save you so much hassle in a VR chat if you turn around and get these trackers set up where they're supposed to be on your body. These trackers you will see floating in space. You won't necessarily see the one that I have attached to my headset. And we're going to get into that. It, 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 that's that's something else that Kuda told me in, in, in able to do. So the trackers you will see them in your liminal space or your space of the the Steam VR when you go into those settings. It's a completely different setting from like VR Chat. There is so many more programs that you, people don't even realize that you were running in the background when it comes to this stuff. 
So you will see these trackers floating around. So one here, one here, and two in the feet. You also see a power bar indication. It will show you how much is there uh, charging for those. And their orientation kind of matters, but it doesn't at the same time. It all, all matters that they line up where you are in the world so if you don't if you see your trackers off to your side you need to recalibrate and have them actually sit where where you want them on your body if they're not doing that then you're going to have issues right one of the major issues that i also had i could get to the point where i would see them on my body but then i would take a step backwards and the trackers would go forward and I would go backwards. So I would be misaligned to the trackers. And that's where the space calibration program really did come into, come into play. What I had to do for the space calibration program, I actually had to, no, I, I was wearing using four trackers. And thankfully we have four trackers because I would have, I couldn't have done this without four trackers with the Quest 3. Uh, I would, at three trackers, it would be very janky and you wouldn't be able to do this properly four trackers the fourth tracker actually allowed me to bridge my connections and that what i had to do here is i take the chest tracker i assigned it as my chest but it doesn't sit on my chest it actually sits on my head and i actually had to tie wrap that to my headset what this allowed then in the space calibration program i was able to turn around and say this tracker needs to be tied with the headset so now when I move around that tracker at the same time as the headset being tracked by my computer, uploading it in two different sources, those sources now come together as one and it helps orientate all the trackers. That was a huge step. Being able to say this headset and this tracker go together and be like, if these two are in alignment, everything else falls in alignment. I had to do that first. I actually had to turn on that single one and have that set up first. Now, the one weird thing on all of this is with the space calibration program, I, I, I it's been mentioned that I should be moving around the room. I was doing that and it would fail. It was failing nonstop. So I got to the point where I just, I just did the one tracker to the headset and I stood still for the calibration. I did a slow calibration for it. They, they give you three speeds, fast, slow, and very slow. I did the, the slowest. And then when it went through that calibration, it suddenly was lining everything up. And I've had to do it a couple times. I'm at the point now where it feels like everything is lined up. Now, before the space calibration, the one thing that I got to say with, and this is in particular with the Quest 3, I don't know what it's like with other headsets. The Quest 3 has its own boundary limits, bounding box that you can set up. If you're, if you're a Minecraft player, bounding boxes, the space of where something spawns in that sense. So what I've done here within the Quest 3, the, the meta app, there is a boundary system that you can set up. And when you set up that boundary system, it gives you your own bounding box or it in this case it gives you your own spawn point and that spawn point moves around in the world so when i when i move over here when i move over here that's where my bounding box stays but when i'm in the real world that bounding box is my play space the space that i'm actually able to move around in the in my room so with that little bit of a bounding box and that that boundaries set up that helped then turn around with the space calibration program, the headset and the tracker that's attached to my head. All those together were able to actually give me the layout of where all the trackers need to spawn. So now when I'm in the, when I boot up, I see them where they need to be. Then it's a simple situation of turning around and doing the VR chat calibration, which if if you're into trackers and you've done the calibration a million times at that point that's the easy part of it all getting the the calibration in vr chat is literally the easiest part of all of this you get to the point where you see the four trackers in vr chat you want to see green bubbles form and you're going to see blue lines with the green bubbles once you have them all lined up where you want them then it's simply you click your buttons you click your trigger buttons and you're off to the races wham bam thank you ma'am you have full vr tracking this took two weeks two weeks of my life trying to figure this out 
And now I couldn't be happier. It was well worth it. 100% well worth it because I get to move around. I get to wiggle. You get to see my new tail. <laughs> this isn't sticking around. And I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how far this goes. That's tracking in a nutshell. Um, it, it took a lot to get to this point. Um, obviously, other things you need to do is plug in each of the trackers into your computer uh, on top of the base stations. Each thing that you plug into your computer, they will up help update it. It will be able to track it a lot easier when it does those types of things. Um, if I leave the room or leave my bounding box, yes, I do become a crumpled mess. I become the pretzel that everyone has seen. But other than that, it's been a, a great learning experience, if anything. And once you know what you're doing with this, it helps a lot. Now, obviously, things are different per person. You may run into issues that you that I might not mention here. These were things that I didn't even know. And then those certain little tips, they helped me immensely. So if you found any sort of help from this video, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, I do talk about tech things every once in a while. And when I do, it's usually because I've, I, I, I've had a massive issue with everything. And you know, we've done this in the past. I've talked about optimization when it comes to video games. And hopefully I can continue doing things like that. Anyway, I am your proud Canadian Phoenix Center Shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you again very soon. Oh,